The front derailleur is a component that's been used on mountain bikes for around 30 years. Now, although a lot of new mountain bikes coming through tend to just have a single chainring on the front, there are a lot of riders out there still using the front derailleur, whether it's on a new bike, a mid-school bike, or a bit of a retro bike like the one behind me. So if you have one, then this is the video you need to find out everything about setting one up correctly and making sure it stays working smoothly. Now, before we get started, let's take a closer look at the front derailleur. And I just wanna say thank you actually to John Cannings who lent me his lovely GT Shazang uh, for this video because I don't actually have a bike that has a front derailleur on it anymore. So it's important to show you one that's relevant and works. Now this one is a Shimano XCR derailleur. It works in exactly the same way as any other front derailleur. Now you get a couple of different variations on them, but the operation fundamentally is the same. Now the only thing that the only similarity between a front derailleur and a rear derailleur is what they do. They both derail chains, but how they work is completely different. Okay, so the front derailleur can be bolted on directly to the frame, or like this one, it could be like a band on uh, or a clamp. Basically, you hear band on used in the road world and clamp on in the mountain bike world generally. Now it's a parallelogram design which enables it to move the chain from a smaller chain to a larger chain and back. That's the only real similarity to the rear one. The rest of it essentially is just a cage. Very simple and it literally just leans against the chain and helps push it onto the ramps that make the chain hop up onto the next chain or back down onto the smaller chain It's really very simple, quite crude if you like by comparison to the tech that's gone into a rear derailleur. Rear derailleurs really are something quite special. Front pretty simplistic by all accounts. Now the only real adjustments you can make on it are the actual height you actually mount the derailleur at, the angle you mount it at. In an ideal world you want it to be parallel with those chain rings for the best shifting. The height it actually sits over the outer chain ring, that's very important, we'll get to that one. The inner and outer adjustment limits just like you would on the rear derailleur to enable you to get into those gears and to not over or under shift. And then the cable tension, that's really it. They're very, very simple. Now, before you start making any adjustments to your front derailleur, there's a couple of things you wanna do. Have a system reset, which we'll get to in a second, and also take into account the range of gears that you have at the back. Now, this particular bike has eight gears. Yours might have anything from five up to 12. There's a massive amount of gears available on all sorts of different bikes out there. Now, generally speaking, you shouldn't be using those extremes. That would mean the big chain ring with the easiest gear, which is the big sprocket at the back. So that's crossing over onto the inside. And the same goes for the smallest at the back, which is your hardest, and the smallest at the front, which is the easiest one, because the chain has to cross over. In the smallest combination, not only does the chain have to stretch all the way across, but a derailleur can't always take up that slack, especially if, like on this bike, it's not a long cage derailleur. Now, when you're doing big to big, it can actually be stretching so much that it can actually damage the derailleur or even snap the chain. So you do need to take that into account. Now for this video, I'm gonna have the chain loosely in the center of the cassette at the rear, just to give me a good ballpark for making those adjustments. And that's a great place to start. You can, of course, check this when you're in each of the gears at the front by shifting up and down the cassette to make sure that the chain doesn't rub, but we will get to that, so don't fret. Now, depending on your chainring setup, you might have overall chainrings or old biopace chainrings on your bike, so that will have an effect on how you set it up. But generally speaking, you want between one and three millimeters of daylight between the outer plate and the top of the biggest tooth on your outer chainring when it's in the biggest chainring. So before you make any adjustments, try and get it to shift up into that. And if it does, you can actually confirm this before going any further. And then on, we're gonna have a system reset. And what I mean by that is releasing any tension that's on the cable and we're gonna start fresh to make sure it works really well. At this point, if you need to change the inner cable, now is your opportunity, but we're just gonna to stick to adjusting it in this case. So go up to the shifter, turn the barrel adjuster clockwise. So that's your left shifter on the handlebars and turn it clockwise, we'll turn the barrel all the way into the shifter and it will remove any tension that's been added to aid shifting. Next step is to shift into the smallest chain ring. So get that done and then we wanna undo the cable clamp. So the derailleur is completely neutral then, it's not got any hindrance or it's not been influenced by any cable tension there whatsoever. Now take a look at the derailleur itself, look at the cage from above for sighting. You wanna make sure that the outer cages and the inner cages are running in line with the chain rings. If it's like at an angle at all, you wanna straighten it up. 
Now it is important to say the reason I said to release the cable is because if there's any cable tension, it can actually be very hard to do this. So releasing that means it's free to move of its own will. So get that nice and straight, and then we're gonna look at doing the limit screw. Depending on your derailleur, it might have a Phillips screw, it might have a flat screw, or it might even have an Allen key head in there, depending on the model you have. So get the appropriate tool for your derailleur, and then you wanna centralize the position of the cages over the chain. Don't forget that the chain is hovering around the middle of the rear sprockets here. Once the derailleur is central over the chain on the smallest sprocket, you wanna be shifting through the gears at the rear of the bike here to see if the chain actually fouls on the cage. Then you can make some small adjustments to it to make sure it doesn't catch on there. Now, something to be mindful of is when it's in the lowest gear, that's your easiest gear or the biggest sprocket at the back in combination with that small sprocket at the front, you wanna make sure that the cage doesn't foul on the chain at all. There should be almost equal daylight between the inside and the outside of it. Uh, the reason for that is it needs that room to actually shift down into that smallest sprocket. Otherwise, it might take some time to drop down on there. Next up, you wanna pull your inner cable through and clamp it up nice and tight. Now, it's important to pull it taut, but not actually tight. As soon as you're pulling it tight, you'll actually find you'll start moving the actual derailleur. Now, pay attention to where the cable comes from. On some bikes, the cable can come from above, and other bikes it can come from below. There's different styles of derailleur available. Now it's time to shift into the middle chain ring. So spin your cranks around as if you're pedaling the bike, change one gear so the chain hops up into that middle chain ring, or does it? So what you need to do if it's not jumping up into that middle chain ring is use the barrel adjuster to add a bit more tension to the system. And you'll find it helps the derailleur move over slightly. Now, once it's actually in that middle chain ring, you need to make adjustments to the barrel adjuster, which only affects the cages of the derailleur itself when it's in that middle position until it's central on there. And the same thing applies, go through the cassette at the back and make sure it doesn't rub at the top or the bottom. Now, this one is key because the middle chain ring is the one that you'll end up using predominantly on a triple chain set bike. So you wanna make sure you can use your entire spread of gears here. Now, this isn't too much of a stretch on the chain. So you definitely wanna be able to get all of your gears without the cage rubbing at all on the actual chain. It makes a noise, it's a bit annoying, and it also means your shifting won't be that clean. So experiment with the barrel adjuster here to move the position. It's important to say, use the barrel adjuster to move the position of the cage when you're in the middle chain ring, and use the limit screws to adjust the high and the low. Now once that's adjusted, you guessed it, up into that big chain ring. Now if you're noticing that the chain isn't jumping up at all onto the outer chain ring, then it might be too low or it might be too high. Like I said at the beginning of the video, you need about one to three millimeters, depending on your model of clearance between those sprocket teeth and the bottom of the outer plate here. If that's the case and it is rubbing or it's too high or low, then return it back to the lower position, undo the cable clamp, then the clamp on the seat tube and adjust it accordingly. It might only need a millimeter or two of adjustment. So just think, little adjustment, you can go back and do it again if need be. Repeat the process until the inner and the central chain ring are working fine and then hop up onto the outer. Same thing applies, get that outer limit screw adjusted until the derailleur is not contacting with the chain ring. Now for, the, for this big one, you wanna make sure that you can get the smallest sprocket at the back and up to the middle perhaps, um, even as far as two down from the top at the back. Um, in this case, John likes to use all of his gears so uh, it might not be the case for you. So I'm just gonna make that adjustment so the derailleur doesn't catch. And once that's made, I wanna make sure the derailleur shifts nice and evenly in all gears. The method for this is keep it in the biggest gear at the back, shift all the way between the big chain ring, middle chain ring, small chain ring, and back up again. And then all the way down to the bottom of the back and repeat. And then for the middle of the back and repeat. Now, if your chain is rubbing at any point, don't forget the adjustments to be made are inner and outer limit screws to adjust to the inner and outer positions, and the barrel adjuster to the shifter when you're in the central chain ring position. Okay, so you've made some basic adjustments to it and it's now working, but you've got some problems. Okay, so there are a few little common things that can happen with a front derailleur. So let's address some of them right now. So the, the obvious one is under or over shifting. So if your chain is either hopping 
over the top of your big chainring or it's dropping onto the bottom bracket shell instead of jumping onto that inner chainring. Simply that is just your adjustment of those limit screws. So it needs to go back to step one and make a few more adjustments and just try hopping the chain up onto the middle and back down again if that's your problem or the same with uh, middle chainring up to the outer chainring. Just it's a little bit of trial and error but really once it's set it will stay like that. So get that one right and it will serve you well. The next one could be the cage of the derailleur is actually rubbing on the chain. Now this can happen for a couple of reasons, uh, independent of those limit screws. It could happen because the derailleur is not centralized or it's just off skew slightly. So you wanna make sure it's completely parallel with the chain rings because if it's not in extreme gears, the chain will rub on the edges of the cage. Now it won't do it any harm, it's just irritating. Uh, and it can make for poor shifting as well. And the other instance when you're gonna get the chain rubbing, the classic one is when you're in the middle chain ring and you're using your smaller sprocket at the back. That's a very common gear to use. And you might find that the chain is just rubbing on this outer plate very slightly. A little turn of that barrel adjuster counterclockwise should help that out a bit. The next one is the tire rubbing on the cage of the derailleur when you're in the lowest gear or your smallest sprocket. There's a few reasons this can happen. The obvious one to check first is your derailleur is actually in line with the chain rings to make sure it's running parallel. Uh, if that's the case, then the next option is the limit screws. You might be able to adjust the limit screws slightly just to take it, bring it inboard a bit, but be careful if you go too far, you're not gonna get down into that smallest chain ring. Just a small amount of adjustment might be all it needs. Now there's some other things at stake here. If it's correctly adjusted, but it's still rubbing, it could be down to frame flex. Now this frame is made of titanium, but you will also get flex in other frames as well, whether aluminium or steel, particularly super lightweight frames or perhaps uh, more budget frames. You can get some flex when you're pedaling and that can actually lead to the, the front neck actually rubbing on the tire. So just consider that. And the last one is if your wheel is buckled or if your tire is actually too big, now older frames tend to have clearance for much smaller tires. We're talking tires like 1.9 inch as opposed to 2.5 inch, which we tend to see these days. If your frame is on the older side, then you're gonna to need to pay a bit more attention here uh, to the size of the tire. And also if your rear rim or the whole wheel is actually buckled slightly. If it's buckled, then naturally it's gonna be waving around and it might just rub at a point of the buckle. If that's the case, then you're gonna to need to get your wheel straightened. Now it's quite likely if it's an older bike and you're making these adjustments, having say got your bike out of the shed um, that's not been ridden for a few years, it might just have some loose spokes. So work your way around that. There's actually gonna be a link to a video in the description just telling you how to nip up the spokes on your wheel without damaging it too much. And that should hopefully sort your problem out. But think there's not a lot that goes on with a front derailleur, there's nothing to be scared of. And once it's adjusted, you rarely need to do anything to it. And unlike the rear derailleur, where the actual cable running through it has to be super smooth, because the fact is only working on three or sometimes two chain rings, how dirty the cable is rarely affects the performance of that front derailleur. So unless yours is really, really sticky, you'll probably work fine with the cable that's already in there. Um, that's about all you need to know. Just a few adjustments, and now you understand what those adjustment points make on the derailleur, and hopefully that is the answer to your perfect shifting. Now, if you've got any suggestions for other videos like this to make, let us know in those comments. We wanna make videos to help you out. Now, of course, the front derailleur is not that common, but I know that there will be people watching this that do need to adjust there. So hopefully this has been good for you. Now, if you're interested in the bike behind me, it's a titanium GT Shazang. Um, if you wanna see me make any more maintenance videos on some of the older components on it, fire away. I'm actually gonna make one on setting up the V-brakes because V-brakes are still commonly used on mountain bikes. And we haven't really done that on GMBN Tech. So that one will be coming up soon on the channel. But as always, thank you for hanging around and thank you for your support.